Uh, you caught me answering some Ask Lisa questions. Don't forget, you can go to our website or to our Facebook page and ask Lisa any food-related questions. But for today's episode, I love Brussels sprouts. And there's a cozy restaurant down in the Crossroads neighborhood in downtown Kansas City serving up the best damn Brussels sprouts straight out of their wood-fired oven. Now, I know most of us don't have a wood-fired oven in our kitchen, but there's no reason you still can't enjoy great Brussels sprouts at home. I think I've got it figured out. Come on, I'll show you how. It is said that Brussels sprouts were cultivated in the 16th century in Belgium, so I guess that's why they call them Brussels sprouts. Um, they're available this time of year in the cooler winter months. They grow on this big, long Brussels sprout stalk, kind of like a Brussels sprout tree. And if you watch, sometimes you'll find them that way at the market, but most of the time they come like this. They're little baby cabbages. Aren't they cute? Because they grow on that stalk, they have a tendency to be kind of sandy and kind of dirty. So before you start, make sure you rinse them really well. I rinse them under running water, and to get all the little bits of grit, I peel back their little capes under the running water, and just let the water kind of run in and around their stem. That way they're nice and clean. Since they're a member of the cabbage family, Brussels sprouts are a cruciferous vegetable, and you know what that means. What it means is they're really, really good for you. They're also a great source of vitamin A and C, and a reasonable source of iron, which is really important if you're a vegetarian. But that's not why I like them. I like them because they are drop-dead delicious. After they're nice and clean, I trim them by chopping the little stem end off and then cutting them in half. So off with the stem end, cut them in half, and then toss them in the bowl with all of those little leaves. Collect all those little leaves that fall off. They're going to be great in our dish. I think what gets people into trouble when they try and make roasted Brussels sprouts at home is they always end up burnt on the outside and then crunchy on the inside. So I think I figured out how to remedy that. Spread them in your baking sheet and make sure you have a big enough pan. You want the vegetables to have plenty of room. Now you can see I've got all these little loose leaves in here. That's totally fine. Drizzle with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And freshly ground black pepper and a little bit of sea salt, probably a little bit more. They tend to need a little bit of salt, these guys do. And then, this is the secret. Cover your pan with foil. Cooking the sprouts covered like this will actually steam the Brussels sprouts, ensuring that they're cooked on the inside. Steaming is actually a moist heat method of cooking. So we'll cook them like this on a preheated 425 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes, depending on how big your sprouts are. After about 20 to 25 minutes steaming in the oven, carefully remove your foil. Be really careful. There's going to be a lot of steam heat under here. Brussels sprout facial. And you can see, oh, they're nice and tender. Absolutely. Perfect. Give them a little stir. Spread them back out. And then we're going to pop them back in the oven, uncovered. And this will be a dry heat cooking method, roasting. And then they're going to get nice and crisp and browned the way you like them. About another 20 minutes or so. Uh, after the Brussels sprouts have completed the roasting part of the show, it's amazing how much they cook down, isn't it? Finish the dish by adding some toasted chopped pecans, some dried cranberries for a little sweetness, a pinch of crushed red chili flakes to get that umami thing going, and a little bit of balsamic vinaigrette. There will be detailed directions for how to make up the vinaigrette on the website. Toss this all together and oven roasted Brussels sprouts. Your dish is ready to go. I thought I had Debbie stumped. 
But she immediately said, Brussels sprouts, no problem, Gruner. Gruner Vetlinger is a wine normally associated with Austria, but this particular one is from Hungary. When I asked Debbie why Gruner, she said that she wasn't really sure, but it just felt right. You know what? I trust her, and perhaps there was a little divine intervention from Bacchus. So let's give it a try. Nice and crispy on the outside. Mmm. Tender on the inside. Let's try it with the Gruner. Oh, boy, it's perfect. There's a nice little bit of acid to it. It's just a very clean, crisp wine, which is perfect with these charred, roasty, rustic Brussels sprouts. Glory chose a wheat beer actually made from Kansas wheat, and I think it's a really good choice. Um, as we know, Brussels sprouts can be a little bit bitter, and the nice, clean, slightly fruity, uh, taste of the wheat beer, I think will cut through some of the richness of these strong flavored vegetables. Yeah, it really works. Nice and clean. Bon appetit. <laughs> Thank you.